It's Tuesday, it's time for a tutorial, and today we're looking at Money Legos, the magic composability of DeFi, and all the different things it can do. And if you've ever found yourself confused about what these are and how you might use them, well, hopefully today we'll shed a bit of a light on that and start building some Money Lego chains of our own and see what we could do with them. We're going to be using Fura Combo, we're going to be using DeFi Saver, and best of all, we're not going to be spending any money to learn, which is a good thing. So strap in, stay tuned while we hear from our sponsors. Nexo.io is a trusted and easy to use crypto lending and exchange platform where you can buy cryptocurrencies at the touch of a button and start earning up to 17% annual interest that's paid out daily. They support all of the major assets on the market, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Polygon, and Polkadot, and allow you to swap one asset for another with lightning speed. With Nexo, you can buy crypto with your Visa and MasterCard credit or debit card instantly and start earning on your digital assets right away. You can also borrow cash and stablecoins tax efficiently against your digital assets without selling them. Nexo complies with the highest security standards and is audited in real time, which is why nearly 3 million people in over 200 countries trust the platform with their digital assets. So whether you're just getting started or you're a seasoned pro, get the most out of your crypto today at nexo.io. Unstoppable Domains is the number one provider of NFT domains. With your unique NFT domains such as camilla.crypto or camilla.nft, you can replace your long, complex wallet addresses, verify ownership of your NFTs, log into Web3 apps, and join tens of thousands of people using them as their Twitter usernames. Better yet, with Unstoppable Domains, you don't have to worry about gas or renewal fees, and you own them forever. Go to unstoppabledomains.com and get your name, .crypto, .x, or .nft, or a range of other endings for as low as $5. So money Legos, think of it like this. You have a piece of collateral, let's say a car or your house. That collateral can be used to take out a loan. Fantastic. <clears throat> now, what are you going to do with that loan? The, the bank or the financial institution that's issuing that loan will persuade you or want you to take do something with that that's within their bank product line. And that's kind of all well and good. And generally, we kind of like to cluster around the brands that we know. And if it's a financial institution, well, maybe we'll trust their insurance product uh, rather than one we might find elsewhere. DeFi doesn't really work like that. DeFi says, you're on Ethereum. Great. You're our friend. It doesn't matter which protocol, you're our friend because we're built on the same underpinning infrastructure, and it's permissionless. So we recognize that you have taken out a loan on, for instance, other, and we're fine with that, and you can move that loan to Compound, great. Or you can use the tokens, swap them on Uniswap, or on one inch, or wherever it is you want to swap them, and then move them somewhere else. It's a bit like saying, well, I have a car, and I take out a loan on my car, and I'm going to use the loan to invest in a company in Brazil or take out a loan in Brazil. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can do it. DeFi is basically like that. It does open up some really interesting possibilities. The problem with a lot of DeFi is that it's quite laborious. You have to take a position, unwrap it, swap a token to another position, or you have to split the token into two other tokens. And that incurs a transaction fee every time. And it's also kind of slow because you have to do one thing, wait for it to clear, do another thing, wait for it to clear. Sometimes you have these chains of like 10 different actions that you have to do in one go. Particularly if you're working with flash loans, Money Legos make it possible to bundle all of that into one transaction, do it much more efficiently. Cost-wise, well, well, we shall see how that all works. So let's have a look at Fura Combo. Fura Combo is basically, it's a protocol or a UX really for allowing you to create money Legos in a visual way. Because if you, unless you're a shadowy super coder, it's gonna be quite difficult for you to understand how to connect up all the different protocols just using the code. Well, Fura Combo allows you to do it visually and they do it through these cubes. So we can see here, optimize your crypto like a pro with the exclusive features and customizations of your choice. So you've got flash loans available to you. Flash loans, those futuristic weird things that seem to be only the preserve of hackers, no. You can have them too. They've got private transactions as well and automation, which is uh, actually quite interesting, maybe a subject for another tutorial. But what we're really interested in here is the create mode. So we're gonna go into the app. I'm gonna look at the create mode here. So what we have here is a little cube. We can click on it and what pops up are these modules. 
So we have a few combo module, Uniswap, Aave, and really what it's doing is breaking down the actions you can perform on these platforms into a simple module that you can then chain together, mixing and matching different modules from different protocols to do what it is that you actually want to do. There's various reasons why you might want to do this, but quite often you'll see a better interest rate on one protocol, let's say on Compound, than you do on other, and you want to move your position very rapidly from other to Compound, but it's if you've ever tried to do that using the platforms themselves, it, it tends to be a little bit kind of frustrating and slow. And actually, really all that's going on is just a bunch of actions under the hood that are interacting with the Ethereum blockchain, and you can just bundle them together using these modules. So let's say, for instance, let's just click on a swap token module. So what this is going to do is give you some inputs. So I could say I want to swap one ETH for, for uni, and that's it. And then I set that module and then I can add more in. It's fantastic. So let's just jump out of here again, delete, click on the, the button again. So you, you can't interact with every single protocol out there in, in DeFi land, but most of the major ones. And that's enough to be getting going with for now. You've got some utility ones down here, send token, wrap to weath, that is, add funds, return funds. And then, you know, there's a bunch of them on curve as well. But why don't we go ahead and actually build one for realsies? So the scenario I want to get into is um, taking advantage of a, an API I found on other. And the API I found was Curve. So the Curve API right now is around 17.93%. I was looking down the list at sort of something that we could use today, and that was the one that jumped out. So let's go ahead and do that. So normally what we could do... It says deposit, but the thing we have to deposit is CRV, the CRV token. I don't have any. So what am I going to do? Fear a combo. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a swap module. I'm going to swap ETH because I have ETH. I'm going to swap one ETH for CRV. There we go. And then set it. One thing to bear in mind is when you're doing swaps, you need to look at this button up here, refresh price. This will start to flash if the price has changed. So if you take a long time to put your recipe together, then you will need to refresh that. The next thing we want to do is we want to deposit the curve that we have just created, or that we're about to create, into other. So now we're going to do that, deposit. And you'll see at the moment, I might have to put in a number in here, but I actually don't. Because if I type in CRV here, we get this previous output button here. Click on that. It will now take the output from this, plug it into the input in this, and then we will get spat out the correct amount of ACRV, which is other deposit tokens representing our CRV position on AVA. We can set this and now we're good to go. So we can now send this. We will be required to uh, confirm a transaction. And how much is that going to cost? $213, everyone. I'm going to reject that because I'm not interested in spending $213 just right now. Thank you very much. So yes, it's expensive, but you can sort of see what we can do with this. Let's clear that one. And let's set up one that's slightly more complicated. So let's imagine, for instance, that we have a position on Compound. We've got some C tokens on Compound. So let's say we want to convert Compound USTC to Compound DAI. That's going to involve a few more steps in order to do that. So let's say we have, we've got a, a better interest rate on DAI, on Compound. So first thing I'm going to do is set up a withdraw module set that to CUSDC, because that's what we're withdrawing. I don't actually have any CUSD, so uh, we're going to do 500,000 CUSDC, which will give us around 11,000 USDC, and then set that. Very good. Now we're going to have to set up a swap module, because we want to swap the USDC that we've created for uh, DAI. So now if we set USDC here in the input, we can take the previous output from here. And now we want to change that to die. There we go. And now we can set it. Remember to check this, refresh price, nothing's changed. Okay, we can set that module. One last step, we need to deposit this die that we've created into Compound to give us our C die. So now we're going to supply on Compound, we're going to supply die like this, previous output, and there we go, and set. We're done. Isn't that easy? 
And all of that will happen in one transaction. If we were to prove this now, it would say you cannot because we don't have any CUSD in your wallet. So it will tell you that you can't do that. So that is kind of a, a simple way to do this. I, I think there are some more things that you can learn on the Learn tab. So if you go down here, you can basically look at some pre-built recipes, which will help you get started on certain actions that are kind of popular that people are doing all the time. So one of the ones I was looking at was on the second page of this, which is liquidity provider. So if we click on edit cubes, we can then look at this liquidity provider position. So on version three of Uniswap, it works slightly differently, but on version two and on most AMMs, you have to supply equal amounts of both tokens in the pair equal dollar amounts of both tokens in the pair, which can be a bit of a pain. So you have your ETH and you want to supply to the ETH DAI pair. So now you have to go and swap four equal amounts of DAI and ETH and it's a bit of a pain in the bum. This makes it easy. <clears throat> so how does it work? So if we look at the logic going through here, 0.5 ETH is going in and being swapped to DAI and that is then being supplied to Uniswap <clears throat> as liquidity on the DAI ETH pair. If we go over here to the initial funds, we need point, well, it's basically one ETH to start off with. So one ETH is being split in two, half of it is going and being swapped to DAI, and then we have an equal amount of DAI and ETH. Click on the pencil here. Let's say we want to change that to something. We've got a big boy pants on, do 10 ETH. Now, if we set that, this will change. Our initial starting balance needs to be 20 ETH in order for us to have a 10 ETH ETH and 10, equivalent of 10 die position in uh, Uniswap V2 as an LP. We could approve that and it would spit out uh, an LP position representing those figures. Simple enough. Let's have a look at another one. Uh, Multiswap was the one I wanted to look at. And here it is, Multiswap. So the, the, the cubes look fairly easy, but this is how it works. So you can set up multiple swaps within the same transaction. This is quite interesting because if, you, if you've been around the market a little bit, you'll know that when ETH goes on a run, all the other ERC20 tokens tend to drop. So you might be in a position where you've got a, you know, a few fairly chunky ERC20 positions, but you want to rapidly move them into ETH because the market's moving at speed. Here's how you would do it. So we would say, okay, I want to swap my USDC into ETH. It's just giving you some sam samples here. I want to swap my... Okay, let's set that. I want to swap my snow into ETH. And I want to swap, I don't know, let's say ENS. No, it's not giving me that option. I want to swap some uni into ETH. I don't actually have any uni right now. And there we go. And that's how that would work. And so make sure you refresh the price. But there you go, all of those swaps will be done in the same transaction, in the same bundle. And if we were to approve that, it would probably end up being quite expensive. But you can see how powerful that would be. So what I want to do now is look at the recipe book in DeFi Saver. So DeFi Saver we've covered before. And if you're interested in kind of more foundational material on getting started in DeFi, we actually did a really cool kind of presentation on that. Uh, just an introduction to getting started, which might be of help to you. And we did actually get into DeFi Saver's simulation mode. But if you go onto DeFi Saver and go into the app, down here you've got a simulation mode. And if you click that on, that will give you 100 ETH. So you can actually get started playing around with all the different things like setting up positions on Maker, setting up positions on Compound. The smart savings product's kind of interesting. You could see this M stable vault paying out 17.8% over 30 days. That's quite nice. And here in the recipe creator, we can start looking at money Legos, but of course, this is 100 ETH, it's in simulation mode. You can get started and actually play around with some numbers without actually spending any money or paying any gas. The one I wanted to look at here was moving a compound position to other. Look at that, six different steps, balance a flash loan, pay the debt back to compound, withdraw collateral from compound, supply collateral to other, borrow from other, and then pay back the flash loan all in a single transaction. So we can edit this in the creator, and it basically looks 
similar to what we had in Fura Combo, but now we're in simulator mode, which Fura Combo doesn't have. So you can start playing around with these. All you have to do is click on it and then change the inputs. And those will, for instance, ripple down through the entire chain and give you the outputs that you want. Definitely worth checking that out because like I said, you can play around with monopoly money and not spend a penny. And that's good for everybody's health, and everybody's sanity, good way to learn. But if you look down here, you can see different modules that you could add in as well. So you can add more actions to this if you're feeling brave. But it's very, very similar to how Fura Combo works, just a different way of visualizing the data. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope that demystified Money Legos a little bit. If you have any suggestions for tutorials, do drop them in the comments below. And as usual, like, subscribe, get a tattoo of my face on your face, and then send us a picture. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.